So, um, welcome to the second meeting in 2016 of the SPPA committee. Uh, good morning to all the members of the committee. Um, our first item on the agenda today is a decision on taking business in private, um, which is a consideration of the mandatory committee's in standing order rule changes. Um, and do members agree to move into private session to discuss these? This is um, a future meeting. Oh, future meeting. Sorry. Just to set us up for the next meeting after summer. So. After summer. All right. So, so that would be done, done at the next meeting of the in private session. Sorry about that. Um, our second item today is for business to consider the rules and membership of cross-party groups. Uh, section 6.4.1 of the Code of Conduct requires that each CPG has at least one MSP member for, from each of the parties or groups represented on the Parliamentary Bureau. In private session, a number of CPGs seeking to re-register experience difficulties in securing full cross-party representation, and it's anticipated that this situation may reoccur in this session. So members have been invited to consider whether they agree to a general modification of section 6.4.1 of the Code of Conduct to allow CPGs which have at least one MSP member from the majority majority of parties represented on the Parliamentary Bureau to register. Uh, and I would invite any comments from the members regards this. A member, oh, sorry, Patrick, please. Just to say, I think it's a very sensible proposal and um, continues to, to require members to demonstrate a breadth of political interest in, in establishing new groups. Thank you. I think it'll be Welcome, going forward, Mr. Scott. Uh, yes, I would support that proposal. I think it's um, very sensible one to endorse what Patrick has said. Thank you. Can I invite members to approve the general modification to section 6.4.1 of the code? Great. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item three is mandatory committees remits. It's the final item today, and members to consider the remit changes for mandatory committees. This has arisen as a result of the decision by the Parliamentary Bureau and the passage of the legislation of the Scotland Act. So I would like to um, invite members to make general comments about the paper that has been proposed by the clerks. Any? Uh, again, I'm, I'm broadly content with this uh, and I think there's been a, a reasonable degree of discussion between the political parties before uh, reaching some consensus about the, the, the remits that should be allocated to, to the newly established committees. Um, I wouldn't have a problem agreeing this as it stands personally. I think my only comment would be to acknowledge the representations that, that we've received from external groups regarding uh, equal opportunities and equalities and, and maybe uh, suggest to the, the, the committee concerned that they might want to look at, 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 at the, the, the recommendations in terms of the frequency of their meeting and so that they, they feel that they can deal with their remit adequately and deal with the concerns that have been raised in that representation. Thank you for that, and um, I know the same representation has been made to the members of what is currently the Equal Opportunities Committee, um, although um, I think expanding the remit of that committee is, is not um, an onerous um, task for the, the people, that, either the convener or the people that, who are on the committee, um, and I am sure that the introduction of human rights as a, into the committee is such an important issue that I'm sure um, they will take cognizance of what's been said, but I am be able to, to um, mitigate the concerns that have been raised. Um, thanks, Camille. I, I mean, I, I understand where the, the, the concerns are coming from. Um, I think it's, it's worth noting that there's a, a number of significant uh, equalities organizations who've expressed this, but many others who haven't expressed these, these concerns as well. I think it might be perfectly reasonable to ask if the, the clerks or the convener would be able to meet with the organisations who've been in touch uh, to, to discuss their, their concerns. Uh, but you know, comparing the, the, the remit of the Equalities and Human Rights Committee as it would be if that's what's agreed, you know, it, it, it's still, you know, I think it compares favourably with the, the remits of, of other committees. For example, Justice, which is where human rights issues have traditionally sat. And I think that's been rather limiting in the sense of uh, framing human rights arguments always in terms of justice and specifically the criminal justice system. I think there's a, 
a long-standing view amongst uh, the, the human rights advocates and, and organisations in Scotland that it needs a broader understanding in, in terms of its, its position in the parliamentary committee system, mm -hmm. and I think this is the, the appropriate way to do it. Okay. I, I think, would you like the, the convener of the Equal Opportunities Committee, as it stands, to meet with the organisations? or, or I mean, uh, if they choose to. I, I think yeah. we, we, mm -hmm. we should certainly offer the, the option to, to yeah. meet with this committee if, uh, if that's possible. Okay, I'm happy to do that. The clerks could um, organise that for um, next term. I, I completely concur. Mm -hmm. I think that that's exactly what is required, convener, uh, so that we ensure that everyone's being uh, accepted and their views are being expressed. Uh, and if there are any concerns, uh, uh, that they're, they're being tabled and they're, and they're being said to the right people so that everyone uh, understands where we're going uh, and we all move forward uh, in that new uh, structure uh, that they're looking to try and achieve. And it would be beneficial for us all. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr Stewart. Mr Scott? I'll um, just reserve my um, judgment <laughs> until I see the, the working paper that's brought forward. Um, I think Patrick Harvey raised... Um, Elsewhere, a suggestion that there might be more to do for the finance committee than might be reasonable. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's the case. I'm not, never having served in the finance committee. I don't know what the burden of work on that committee is. But um, I would, I would, I would like to withhold my view <laughs> until such time as we see the working document that, that's brought forward. Any more comments? I'd, yeah, I'd just like to what Mr Scott was saying, that I would like to see the, the document in uh, the autumn and, and then express a view. So um, it, it, the suggestion would be that we, we don't approve the... Um, so we want to consider the draft report to the Parliament setting its standing order rules and changes after summer recess and not make a formal approval of the mm -hmm. suggestions today and ask the clerks to take back their concerns about um, capacity for the new powers and that the new powers should be um, normal um, in terms of the, the ordinary working and scrutiny of the, of the committee and also ask them to um, consider whether, although we are in a very fluid situation and things are very um, difficult at the moment to make any sort of firm plans about how this should go, go forward, but to, to look at where... Um, you know, exi existing um, remits of the ministers could be reflected in the, the, the committees that would normally scrutinise that kind of work. So we'll look forward to that paper in the summer. Has everyone agreed on that? Thank you very much. That's, um, and that's the last agenda item. Can I wish everyone, hopefully, <laughs> a recess of some kind <laughs> over the summer? And um, we'll see you all again. Um, uh, Whenever, <laughs> as we don't know if Parliament might be recalled, but um, uh, a, a very happy summer to everyone, uh, and um, we'll see you soon. Thank you.